Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, welcoming you into this edition of Revealing the Truth with our dear friend and best-selling author, Carl Gallops. He's the author with Rabbi Zev Parad of the Rabbi, the Secret Message, and the Identity of the Messiah. He's also the best-selling author of Gods of Ground Zero, Gods and Thrones, Nahash, Forgotten Prophecy, and The Return of the Elohim. When the Lion Roars, understand the implications of ancient prophecies for our time. Gods of the Final Kingdom, Masquerade, Prepare for the, for the Greatest Con Job in History, and in his latest book, The Summoning. Summoning. God, Carl is the senior pastor of Hercury Hammock Baptist Church in Milton, Florida since 1987, an Amazon Top 60 best-selling author and a conservative radio host, heard nationally and internationally since 2002. You can find out more about him at carlgallops.com. <coughs> Appearing here on the second Monday at the 12 o'clock hour and the fourth Thursday of every month at the 11 o'clock hour is our good friend Carl Gallops joining us to dig into deep discussions about the Bible and what's going on around us. Welcome in to our dear friend, Carl Gallops. Carl, good to see you, my friend. You're back from a whirlwind trip of yeah, uh, yeah, multi thank you. Hey, mo multiple states. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, first of all, thank you, Rabbi Eric. It's always great to be with you. I love you, brother. And, and Jason, man, I love you too, your producer. He's an awesome guy. Um, and, and I've had the honor of being in studios with you live before, and so it's good to, you know, that I got to meet you guys and spend some personal fellowship time with you but yeah we'll do it this way as long as we need to <laughs> and i wish i maybe we can make it work where i can be there again live with you but in the meantime thanks for having me and yes um i just got in um last night and um have been uh, let me see been in south carolina and um georgia atlanta live and south carolina um, I forgot to call letters of the station, Christian Channel, and and I've been up in Missouri, uh, Jim Baker show, and the Skywatch TV, and um, so anyway, yeah, a whirlwind tour. I've got some more coming. I've got a lot of radio work coming up. Of course, I can do that from my studios at my house, so, including including coast to coast uh, AM, and I right. love doing secular stations like that, you know, because I get to preach Jesus, and I slide it in there, and so my books kind of lend themselves to that, so. Um, all praise to the Lord. Thanks for having me on, man. Well, we're glad to and, have and, you. And on your show, I love because we can talk about anything we want. We talk about anything we want because it's our network and we get to call the shots. And that's, that's uh, right. you know, we kind of take the uh, Tom Horn model that says that we're going to put it out there bold. We're going to take a firm stand. We're going to get excited about what the Lord is doing. And we're going to call it like we see it. And even though we have just been thrown in Facebook jail, we are not going to allow that to deter us from all the other streaming sites that we're on. If Facebook wants to censor us, it just means that we are hitting a nerve. Yes. And we are yes. telling the truth and... Uh, you know, the Word of God says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you yes. free, and we are committed to that truth. Wear it like a badge on our brother. I, I, I tell you, um, I know you've never held anything back, regardless, and you've been, you know, you, you and I both try to be gracious and, and, and all of that. I mean, we know how to act in somebody else's house or in public, and, you know, you're kind of on... In Facebook, you're in their house, I get that, but, but they put it out there as a medium for, you know, for saying what, you know, what you, what you, uh, what you want as long as it doesn't break any laws, and you're calling for violence or something like that. So, but the problem is they've now become, you know, like communist Chinese or something, and, and now they're going to determine what, what biblical things we can say and what biblical things we can't say. So the bottom line is, really... And, and, and you and I know Romans 8, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And so what shall then we say to this? If God's for us, who can be against us? So something really good's going to come out of this, brother. I've seen that over and over in my church all through my ministry, but particularly during COVID. I mean, it's, it's, it's astounding the people around the world that are literally joining our church. It forced us to kind of come up with a, a, a remote membership plan. And we didn't want to water down membership. You know, I mean, we require that people go through a new members class and have a profession of faith and a testimony. We're not legalistic about how we 
gather that, but we do we do ask people to at least do this. Show us that you tell us that you're saved and give us your testimony. Show us that you care about being a, a real doctrinally sound member of our church. Go through our little class four, five, six weeks. Ask questions, be a part of it. So we've got people now who are doing that with us from all over the world, Germany, Canada, places where the churches are still closed, um, who are flocking to our church, going through our new members class, and now, in fact, when I'm, I'm when this interview's over, I am doing a pastoral interview. I always do this with people who come through the new members class, with a woman from Canada, who's just completed it, um, was one of several who have done this, and not only that, but she is. Uh, we're, we're that forced us to think of a way to get people in our Sunday morning Bible studies, and so now we've put video and Zoom and and internet in all of our Bible study rooms. And so people are joining us around the world for Bible study, Sunday school it used to be called, and worship and anything else we do. And uh, so same thing with you. One thing about being kicked off Facebook is now you and I today, we don't have to worry about anything we say. (laughs) Nothing. Not a thing. Right? I just hit the button on my chair and it went sliding down. So let me fix that. You know, when you... uh, Wow. uh, Uh, All of a sudden, I was looking over the top of my desk. There there you go. That's the uh, the old Johnny Carson model that said that his guests would sit lower than him because he was so small that uh, he would always appear taller. Uh, Yes, yes. That's funny. You know, one of the things that uh, you have always done is connected what's happening today with what the Bible foretells and looking at where we are in uh, the move towards the return of Messiah. And that's uh, all of us should have that uh, that uh, first Peter 315 attitude of having a ready answer for the hope that's within you and that hope that hope can't be 2000 years old that Jesus died on the cross for me. It's that he's coming back and that right. he's coming back to defeat this present darkness, to bring the light back to a dark world. But uh, the world is going dark. Amazon has now removed uh, across the board anything they considered that did not pass their test for what they considered to be hate speech. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's tantamount to what we saw at Kristallnacht. It's tantamount to yes. what we saw in 1939, 1940, the book burnings, the gatherings to remove all the literature that did not uh, support uh, the Nazi agenda. And we're now seeing that there are pressures being put on uh, media outlets that if you are going to be a Newsmax or a uh, One America News, that uh, the cable networks are now being pressured into taking a look at their programming and whether or not it's going to line up. And uh, you know what? This has happened fast. Yes. It has happened. It's coming like a flood, <clears throat> isn't it, brother? It really is. It's coming like a flood. And, and, you know, the word that comes to mind that's throughout the Bible that you and I have talked about before is the word suddenly. And suddenly this is all happening. And it seems that the minority view, which may not be anymore, as I'm looking at the statistics that are coming out, is that the true, committed, conservative Christian believer is no longer the 71 percenter. We're now in the 40 percent. Okay. And it, we're, we're, we're not the majority of the American biblical worldview anymore. Right. As a matter of fact, and, there, and not to parse your words, because you're exactly right, those are the stats, but, but there is also now a, a recorded statistical difference that's been, that's been released just in the last year or two between the 41% who profess to be Christian and those who truly, out of that 41%, hold to a biblical worldview, and that's d- defined, and I can't remember all the parameters, but it's basically Jesus is the only way, the Bible's the real word of God, um, you know, we believe what the Bible says about marriage and gender and, you know, abortion, the, you know, the, the sanctity of life. And when you do that to that 41 percent and say, where do you stand here? Less than 10 percent adhere to a biblical worldview. 
So, brother, we're getting way down. The church is being winnowed. It's being sifted. Six percent. George Barna just did, uh, and George is on with us every month. He's a very close friend. And, uh, yeah, that's right. I forgot uh, that. One, one of my favorite people in the world. That's who and, I as, yeah. as are you, George is just, uh, uh, he's funny. Uh, people don't know that. Uh, here's this man that's probably the most quoted uh, man in Christianity today. Uh, the Barna name uh, carries, it's published all the time. He's no longer part of Barna Research, but the Barna name is out there every day. And they just finished their uh, study, and it's 6%. Only 6% of the body of Messiah maintains a biblical worldview. It's called the Biblical Worldview, the worldview Analysis for 2020. Yeah. And that was the result of the survey was 6%. And that's why I said less than 10%, because even my the last he did a couple of years ago or a year ago was less than 10%. Mm -hmm. and, and so now we're to 6%. Now listen, brother, you know this, and most of your audience does, but just in case, first I want to give perspective, and I want to uh, instruct and inform those that may not know this. As you and I are talking, we may be shocking some people that are listening to us with these statistics. Um, Jesus told us it would be like this. I deal with this in the book Masquerade, which was the book right before the summoning. And by the way, both of those books have been released in less than a, a year's time period. Um, Masquerade came out in March 2020, and then the summoning came out in January 2021, so less than a year. So they're both out there in less than a year apart from each other in release. And in that book, I did a deep study of Matthew 13, where Jesus gives seven distinct parables. He has, the, we call them the kingdom parables. Now he has three more kingdom parables that he speaks later on uh, in the in the Gospels, but those seven were spoken at that one sitting. We know there may have been others, but it records Matthew records those seven. And of course, one of the most famous is the um, the sowing of the seed falling on the different grounds. I guess the next one that's probably the most quoted in study is the one about the wheat and the tares. And Jesus gives the definition of both of those. In fact, both of those, the disciples said, what does this mean? It's interesting because to us, it seems so apparent. But you got to remember, this is the first time these guys had ever heard anything like this. And here was the, the you know, God in the flesh, the Messiah, the Christ, and and not everybody was accepting him that way, but the disciples were coming around. They knew he was some great man from heaven and, and from God and maybe even the Messiah. And so they they were, and when I say disciples, I mean the crowds, the, the inner 12, you know, they knew, of course, Judas didn't stick to it. But, but the bottom line is they asked him, what's the meaning of these parables? And in both of those, he spoke about Satan infiltrating Satan picking away like the birds of the air, picking away the gospel and its implantation in people's hearts and souls. And, and of course, the, the, word, the word that Jesus was, was basically speaking is, listen, when you grasp the gospel and you get it, I mean, live it, live it. I mean, let the Holy Spirit be born again. You've got to be spiritually born again. He told Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a great religious good guy. But he wasn't born again, you know. Well, and then the wheat and the tear, tares. I mean, this was a prophecy of the last days about the enemy who is Satan, he said, who is the devil, came in among the kingdom work, among the wheat, and sowed the tares. And tares looks almost identical to wheat. It's so hard to tell. It's a weed, though. It doesn't really produce any fruit. And then the disciples, you know, he said, but don't, they said, well, let, let's go pull up the, the tares. He said, no. And of course, there are times when we have to. I mean, I've had times in 34 years in my church where people have come in and, and they've made it clear they're there to destroy the church. Well, we pull those weeds out. But everybody else is on different levels of, you know, coming to the Lord and maturity and Bible study. And I get that. And that's what Jesus is saying. He said, look, you, you can't know the deep recesses of a person's heart, but I can. So let me pull them up in the last days. I will pull them up in the last days. I will sift between the wheat and the tare in the last days. Well, brother, I can't help but believe that, that we're there. I mean, we're in the leading edges of that right now. We're watching it happen. And among the church globally, and there's the prophetic significance of this. This isn't something that's just happening in the United States. 
it isn't something that's just happening in the Bible Belt or in Alabama or Florida where we're located right this moment. It's, it's, it's not that. It's, it's global. And, and COVID-19 kind of kicked it off. I mean, you know, there's some demonic powers behind this thing. And, and we're watching it. And um, I was, that's why I was sharing with you about folks. Um, um, I don't know if we were off the air or on the air when I was talking about the, oh, yeah, we were on the air. But we, we were talking about people joining our church, you know, by, by live stream and actually joining. And, 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 but, but they're coming from places where they, they can't have church. Or in the case of the woman from Canada, they're still very, Canada's still very strict on no church. But the only two churches in her small community up in the rural area of British Columbia, um, the pastors have left town. They just left. They shut the doors and left. There is no church. And so the people from Germany, a young couple who were saved through our ministries. And here, let me give you their testimony very quickly. They said on video, we showed it last Sunday in our church, and this woman that's joining this coming week, we're showing her video. They all, they make little videos, little one-minute videos, just give a quick little testimony of why we want to be a part of the, your church and what's happening in our life. The couple from Germany, precious young couple, they look like maybe they're 30, 35, and they are saying on this video, we were not believers. When COVID rounded the corner in 2020, we, we were not believers. We were just, you know, secular Germans. And they were going on with their life, young couple making their way in life. And then that happened. And then they started watching all of the unfolding, the connecting, you know, governments and the mantra and the politically correct and shutting down indiscriminate, you know, churches shut down, uh, casinos stay open, you know, and it, and, and, and it freaked them out. Mm -hmm. And they said, we saw this evil, and we jumped on the Internet trying to find some answers. And, and I don't know where they saw me. I mean, just God must have directed them. But, and there are many others like yourself that are out there speaking and preaching this. But for whatever reason, this couple found me on some broadcast, maybe yours. And they listened, and, and, they, and, they, and it was one where I was telling people how to be saved. And they gave their life to the Lord. Then they found our channel. They started watching our live stream. They've been watching it for months. Now they're a part of our church family. I mean, that, that's what's happening, brother. This is the phenomenon. It's global. The church is being sifted. So here are these people who weren't even going to church, weren't even born again. But the sifting caused them to come running to the foot of the cross. Yet, among those who've been going to church for decades and decades and decades all over the world, including pastors in pulpits, when the same thing hit, rather than running to Jesus, they shut the doors, ran, you know, and it, it's just the sifting's happening. And, and just let me say this, brother, and then I'll hush, but um, I'm not judging individual pastors or individual churches or even individual Christians. Jesus said, don't do that. And he said, let me, let me handle it, but it's coming. You'll see a falling away. You'll see the great apostasy. You'll see the weeding out. Church in Nashville yesterday on the Christian Post, uh, I don't know if it was Nashville, it was in Tennessee, saying that they, you know, they've just made the declaration the Word of God is not the infallible Word of God and that it changes and shifts with time. And I mean, they've just gone completely uh, apostasy. The, the Bible said all of this was going to come. Doctrines of demons falling away, sister and brother turning against sister and brother, even reporting each other to the authorities. Brother, we're watching that happen like a flood that bombed his life. Um, tell him I've quoted him in all my books. He needs to come on my show, too. I'd love for my audience to hear him. But anyway, um, your good friend Barna uh, making it clear that even in the, the, the largest Christian nation on the planet, we're down to 6% who say, I stand in the Word of God. I know what a marriage is. I know what a little boy and a little girl are. I know what the, the sanctity of the womb is. Um, I know how to be saved only through Jesus Christ. I know that the Bible is the Word of God. Six percent of those who claim to be Christians will say those things in America. Well, as, as, as you make it clear in the summoning, uh, these are the days of Noah. Uh, we are looking at all of the same setting that Noah was facing for the hundred years that he was preaching in the preparation for what God had called him to do. 
and all that's happening. But people don't seem to care. They don't Which is a sign of the days of Noah. Exactly. They the just drink, they, and they'll buy and they'll sell and they'll be given in marriage and they won't even know until the day the flood came. Exactly. So as we, as we look at this and uh, as a Christian network and as a Christian programmer, uh, we want to give people the answers yes. as to what to stand firm on. But in order to do this, we have to take the same approach the FBI takes, and that is the same thing the Treasury Department, the same thing banks do. You have to examine to discern the counterfeit from the authentic, and they all appear on the surface, a hundred dollar beer a bill, a counterfeit hundred and an authentic hundred, uh, not to the trained eye, they appear to be the same. And so <clears throat> as people are listening to the Fauci's, they're listening to the reports coming out of uh, the National Institute of Health, uh, the World Health Organization, <clears throat> they're relying on what they've always relied on, which is statistical data from what they call the experts. But the contradictions within that, when you truly examine it, are stunning. And yes. it's, it is a, another piece of propaganda. It's no different than uh, what was going on in, uh, uh, with Tokyo Rose, with what was going on in Vietnam, what was going on during the Cold War, propaganda. Uh, in, in, in putting on the good face, putting on the good presentation so that you will not stand against the powers that are in play. You're going to let this legislation flow through. You're going to let censorship take place. You're going to let your kids be indoctrinated into an yes. LGBTQ environment. You're going to allow that to happen because you've been lulled into this false sense of security that the government is your friend, that people are not motivated by the money, which we, you and I both know, uh, we've been following the money for, uh, for me, all my life, almost 70 years. Uh, it's always been follow the money, and you're going to find out where the special interests are. It's very apparent, but people are turning a blind eye to it. But you have done uh, some deep research, and I want to get into that on the other side of this break. Uh, we're talking with Carl Gallops, as we do uh, on a bi-monthly basis. We meet with him on the second Monday of every month in the 12 o'clock hour and the fourth Thursday of every month in the 11 o'clock hour because there's just so much to talk about that going longer than two weeks in between our time with Carl, so much changes that it's really hard to keep up with. We really should do a weekly, we should do a <laughs> daily, we should just do a 24-7 telethon uh, like the old days. Uh, yeah. of just keep on going. but How about I put a tent up in your parking lot out there and I just, every day we do something. That, that's exactly right. That's <laughs> a, that, I'm, I'm all for that. We're going to take a short break and when we come back we're going to continue our discussions with the author of the new book, The Summoning with Carl Gallops. We'll be right back. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, host of Revealing the Truth, Revealing the Bible, and revealing prophecies seen every week on the Igniting Nation Broadcasting Network. Our daily on-demand programming is available on our Apple and Android apps and on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Android TV. We broadcast live Monday through Friday through our apps on our website, IgnitingNation.com, and on Facebook Live. You can listen daily on our audio platforms on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, and iHeart. Our lineup of best-selling authors bring you the most in-depth biblical insights into the most pressing issues of our time, including prophecy, Israel, spiritual warfare, and a wide variety of contemporary Christian issues impacting the body of Messiah around the globe. If you missed the live show, you can always catch up on the Igniting Nation YouTube channel. Follow us on social media and join us as we endeavor to heal the nations with the Word of God. 
With today's smartphone technology, news, information, sports, and entertainment is widely available and almost unbounded. But what about the information that believers in Yeshua are looking for? Well, now there's an app for that. Igniting a Nation now has apps available for Android and iPhone. With our app, you'll gain access to everything you would in our website, from our featured guests to our live streaming shows. Visit Google Play or the Apple Store and download Igniting a Nation's new app today. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker inviting you to study right by my side through the Biblical Truth Library. Imagine having access to over 1,000 hours of audio and video teachings available to you through our website on a subscription basis or via our Apple and Android apps on an a la carte basis. Whichever method you choose, we promise to deliver new insights into the living Word of God as seen through the eyes of a Jewish believer. If you hunger and thirst like millions around the world for a deeper walk with God and the revelation of new understanding of the Scriptures, visit IgnitingAnation.com and click on the Biblical Truth Library or on any device with our free app. Don't let another day go by without receiving your heart's desire for a new depth of understanding into all of God's Word. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker inviting you to join me and my special featured guest twice per month with Rabbi Zeb Parat and Carl Gallops and monthly with Dr. Michael Heiser, Dr. Michael Lake, Dr. Timothy Jennings, Dr. Mark Baker, Dr. Jeffrey Johnson, Drs. Michelle and Mark Sherwood, Dr. Kim Moss, Derek Gilbert, Peter Rosenberger, Brandon Gallops, Steve Fair, Stephen Black for in-depth insights into Israel prophecy, the unseen realm, the brain, spiritual warfare, overcoming shame, mysteries of the Bible, prophetic insights, the sensational and the supernatural, caregiving, addiction recovering, understanding the divided heart, same-sex attraction, and much more. We're proud to feature some of the greatest biblical minds from both Israel and around the United States. Check out our featured guest lineup and 24-7 feed on IgnitingAnation.com or watch by topic on any device with our free apps. If you can't find what you need, you're just not looking in the right place. Follow us on social media and download our free apps today. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker inviting you to join me and Israel's number one rated guide, Edo Kanan, for our annual Israel trip. Our 2022 trip is now open for registration for our 18th trip to Israel. Our trip will take us from Tel Aviv to the Galilee, down to the Dead Sea, and four nights in Jerusalem. You will walk where Yeshua walked and watch the Bible turn from black and white to living color. Visit ignitinganation.com forward slash events and download the registration form today. No, it's not too early to take advantage of our payment plan designed to fit any budget. All of our trips sell out, and we want you to experience this life-changing journey. Registration is now open for April 2nd to 13th, 2022. And we promise you, you will never read your Bible the same way again. Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, and as we do on the second Monday of every month in the 12 o'clock hour and the fourth Thursday of every month at the 11 o'clock hour, we join with our good friend Carl Gallops, author of the new book, The Summoning, talk about all things biblical and the world's impact on the believer. And what the government's telling us, what the World Health Organization is telling us, and the fear. And it's very interesting that um, I'm, I'm doing a tandem program, one with Dr. Michael Heiser on the Old Testament, the 500 references the Old Testament in the book of Revelation. I'm doing a program with Steve Wolberg, a Jewish believer who is an expert on the book of Revelation. He has 45 books out on just an incredible deep dive. And one of the things that we are seeing is the words like a. Uh. You know, you and I have talked about this before, yes. that, that the enemy masquerades like a. Uh. But these words pop up again very profoundly 
as yes. we look in Daniel and we look in yes. Revelation, that the words like yes. uh, Zechariah, Zechariah, there. right? Uh, yeah. it, 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 and it's it's a syntax that says this is not the authentic. It is an imitation. It is an something imitation. is like as, but because we are so impressionable. We are so weak in our biblical, you and I have a biblical response, chapter and verse, for I, I can't think of anything you could throw at me that I could not give you a biblical response to. Okay, That's what I've devoted my life to in the Tiber text and then the last 25 years as a believer. You devoted your ministry career to the same apologetics uh, Dr. Michael Brown, uh, I, I don't put myself in, in a category. He is a brilliant mind. I've studied with him for over 200 hours. Uh, he, he just amazes me. But, but when we look at things like, like ah, uh, you and I look at that and say, okay, God is telling us this is not the authentic. This is, this is something that is in the earth to scare you, but you need to know the truth. Yes and people are reading it and they're falling for it. Yes. And fear, and God is not the author of fear. The um, reports that are coming out about COVID, which are, they're, they're, they're a false narrative. And you have uh, just come back from talking about this. I want you to share. Uh, what you've learned about the National Institute of Health, about the CDC, about what's going on, and then what it's done in putting the fear of death yes. Yes. into the hearts of wonderful, precious people that you and I pastorally have such a burden for who are struggling with this desperate fear of death, this specter yes. of death. Yes. So, thank you. Let me, let me give you the microphone and have you take us on a journey into this COVID-19 research, these uh, studies that are being done, the information that's being put out, and then take us into uh, the result, which is something that is diabolical, and uh, for the believer, we are supposed to have death, oh death, where is your sting? Uh, death, death is nothing to me. Death is nothing to you. It's, it's the beginning of a, another chapter uh, yep. in a life in the Lord. It, it, it's, it's not to be feared. Yep. Listen, thank you for setting me up. I've had so many things come to my mind here. Let me, let me, let me truncate it like this. Um, The National Institute of Health, let me start there. No, let me start here and just say the opening pages of the summoning. I, I am convinced, and I say this, I say it much more eloquently in writing where I've got editors looking at it than I am now, but, but <clears throat> I am convinced that something snapped in 2020, probably before, months before, but this COVID thing. Now, listen, <clears throat> we've got viruses everywhere and bacteria and death and disease and pestilence. This is not the Black Plague, but it has become the spiritual Black Plague. It is the spiritual Black Plague, plague, as I will soon quote from the National Institute of Health and the CDC concerning global epidemic of the fear of death. That's the words they use. Terror of death, the NIH says. Uh, in fact, they're dealing with terror management now and mental illness that's coming out of this globally. Brother, we, we've never seen anything like this before on the planet, N not of this magnitude. And so I opened the pages of my book with that as the premise before I even knew these things about NIH and CDC, just what's happening and what the Bible said and all of the things that connect to it, the prophetic uh, declarations of Jesus, the prophetic declarations of Paul and John and Peter mm -hmm. concerning the last days. And brother, they have converged. I said, have converged. I said, they're not coming. They have converged in the year 2020 and 2021 now. And I, I don't set dates, and I'm not some overly sensational guy. I just, 
I tell people I am sensational sometimes because the Bible's sensational and and life is sensational. And when you compare the two, people go, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. I didn't see that. Oh my gosh. And so it's, but I try to be level-headed and rational and reasonable and scientific, most importantly, biblically contextual. I don't give a rip what somebody says is science if it doesn't match up with the Word of God. But I'm just laying the groundwork for where I'm getting ready to go, Brother Eric, and that is the book, The Summoning, lays it. It lays the groundwork. And and um, so now let me just, it lays the groundwork for what's happening, where we are, what Jesus said about it, what the Bible said. And I take you through various stages of this, and I put you third person in the scriptures for a big chunk. I put you on the ark with Noah, because the subtitle is Preparing for the Days of Noah. We're in the days of Noah, brother. We just are. And I can, you know, we can go into that later. But now, so here several weeks ago, I discovered it. I can't remember how long it's been posted for some months, but the National Institute of Health is now addressing a major global mental health disease pandemic. That's their words. And the, the mental health crisis is this, this terror, their word, of, the, of, of dying, of death, the fear of death syndrome. And it is global. And they're talking about because of this, and they connect it to COVID-19. They say it in their study. And it's like off air, you, you and me and your producer, Jason, we were talking about this. This is a part of the great deception of the last days. It's all playing into Satan's plan. They've planned. Early on, we teased about, about it and called this the fear-demic. Well, it's no longer tease anymore. Now we know that's exactly what this is. We know it's coming from the depths of hell, even though the National Institute of Health has, says nothing biblical, nothing spiritual. Of course they wouldn't. But they're... It's almost like reading the Bible. <laughs> I promise you, I'll, I'll show you this from Scripture. When you read this report, it, and the synopsis is only like four or five paragraphs long on their page, it's like you're reading Scripture with some scientific terminology put in there. And, and it's astounding. And they talk about that there's a, a marked increase globally, epidemic increase of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, um, I've got other reports dealing with this same thing, talking about the pornography addiction. And of course, with that comes the sex slave industry and the people that are in misery and being killed or kidnapped or destroyed their lives and everybody behind them that never see them again. And all of this is coming out of it, plus the uptick, huge uptick in suicide rates around the nation. And now they're saying they make a big deal of mental health disease, they call it mental health issues it's driving people mad and and some people are getting so depressed and discouraged of course they're committing uh suicide and or they're overdosing on their depression medicine trying to stay ahead of the curve of what they're feeling they're just not dealing with life and and um so i read all of that several weeks ago i read that to my church from the pulpit and then took some scripture in it and just tried to get you know talk everybody off the ledge and just say, look, here's the biblical truth. Well, just a few days ago, I just playing around with that in Google, just seeing what other reports are out there. CDC, they address the same thing. They break it down. The largest group, this is, this is so, it's, it, it infuriates me. The largest demographic group that is involved in this global terror epidemic, this terror and dread of death, is from the ages of 18 to 25, I think it is, right, right in there, 18, older, teen, young adults, okay? And, and these are the people that when they get COVID, if they get COVID, the vast majority don't even know they have it, and those that do, it's very mild, and even those that get it bad, and even if they go to the hospital, 99.9% .9 survival rate, I mean, the chances of them getting killed in a car wreck today are probably a lot greater than dying of COVID. Yet, they're drugging themselves and alcoholing themselves and, and thinking about committing suicide and or doing it and or getting depression medicine because they just they are just convinced COVID is going to kill them. And yet, the science doesn't say that. But now, but the media puts that fear. Uh, social media drives that fear. Mainstream media drives that fear. Government figures drive that fear. Government doctors drive that fear. And so 
here we are, brother. And, and again, what did Jesus say about the very last days? And again, I'm not setting dates, but here we are. We're 72, 73 years the other side of the return of Israel now. This year, 73 years. Uh, brother, that's getting close. The fig tree blooming and that generation will not pass away until all of these things fulfill. I don't know what a generation is, and that's debatable in the scriptures and in philo philosophical circles of generations. But, brother, <laughs> we're 73 years. You know, I know most people don't live past 100 and most people don't live past about 85. But, um, but so I don't know what a generation is, but he's speaking of the people that are alive that see the return of Israel and they're not hundreds of years removed from it, but within a generation of living people, he said, they'll see it all happen. And that matches what Daniel said when he said the end will come like a flood. It'll happen quickly. And so one of the things that Jesus said was, get this, and I'm going to paraphrase it and put it in modern English. He said, people will die from heart attacks at the terror, at the fear of what they see coming upon the face of the earth. Jesus said that. He said, in those days. Well, brother, again, I'm sure we're not in the, in the depths of what he prophesied, but we're already in the door. We're in the room of that. This, in, the NIH, National Institute of Health and CDC, confirms it. They say people are dying or killing themselves because of the fear and the dread of death. And if they don't die, if they don't kill themselves, they're developing mental illness. And even if they don't develop mental illness, they're getting addicted on drugs and alcohol and depression medication. And even if they're not getting addicted, they're still suffering from depression and discouragement and despair and just the daily fear. I mean, brother, and it's epidemic. And the Bible prophesies. By the way, the Quran doesn't prophesy this. Neither do the teachings of Buddha. Neither do the teachings of the Hindu Vedas. And I'm not trashing other faith systems. I'm just saying there's one book in all the world where in the Messiah and those that write the scripture and follow Messiah's teachings and, and, and are, and, you know, uh, um, and filled with the Holy Spirit, only one book in all the world that prophesied, dared to, to prophesy the return of Israel, dared to prophesy that in those days, in that generation, specific things would mark that day. The only book in the world, and now we're living it, and we're the first generation to be living it. So I want to tell the people listening, your viewers, um, you know, this is your congregation, brother, so thank you for letting me speak to your congregation. I, I, I tell people all the time, my congregation included, so that's, what the, that's what's happening in the world. But for those of us that are born again, here's what Hebrews 2 says, and your, your folks can go check it out. In fact, maybe you can find it while I'm talking here, and I'm going to paraphrase it. But you get down near the end of Hebrews 2, and, and, and I love the whole chapter. I wish I had time to preach it and teach it. But down near the end of it, the author of the book of Hebrews, he says, and look, here's the deal. It is the fear of death that is Satan's power. That's his power. That's, I mean, brother, look, he cannot make Eric Walker or Carl Gallup's do anything. He can't just take you by the nap of the neck and make you kill somebody. Now, he messes with your mind. He messes with your heart and your being. And one of the things he messes with is fear, fear, anger, rage, fear, terror, uh, dread, depression, discouragement. And this all comes through the mind. It comes through your, your surroundings. This is Satan's power. Hebrews 2 says this is Satan's power, the fear of death. And by it, the world is enslaved. He says, but you, you born again who trust in Jesus Christ, you are no longer enslaved by this. Now, I'm just going to say, listen, I've, I was a cop for 10 years, brother. I've been in gun battles. I've been shot at and shot back. And I mean, I, I get it. There, there is a moment of anxiousness when bullets are coming by your head, maybe even terror, uh, uh, you know, flight or fight kind of syndrome. I get that. But what the Bible's talking about is as a born again believer, we might be startled. We might be afraid at times. We might have a, a wave of terror come over us when something unexpected happens. That's not sin. That's just the human body reacting to its environment. We were created to kind of take care of the situation, fight or flight. But what is sin is when we basically, and this is kind of spit in God's face and say, I don't trust you. I don't think you can save me from this. I don't think you can, 
you can handle this. Uh, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm just going to kill myself. I'm just going to, I'm going to immerse myself. I'm going to, you know, take a bottle of drugs and just put myself out of my misery and pain. And, and, and Hebrews 2 says, but you, dear brothers and sisters, you are no longer a slave to this power. You have been delivered and set free from this power in Christ Jesus. And so I just want to remind the church that's, again, Paul writes Timothy, you know, God has not given you a spirit of fear, Timothy. Why did he write that to Timothy? Because Timothy was becoming very timid. He was becoming, he was becoming uh, intimidated by the culture. He's watching perse persecution of the churches, watching Christians go to put in prison. Before long, they would be in lion's dens and all of these different things. And the, in, the, in the Colosseums, Timothy, I don't think, lived to see that, but that would come right shortly after. He saw it building and building, and he was beginning to get kind of afraid to boldly preach the word, and Paul chastised him. He said, look, that's a demonic a demonic spirit that has attached itself to you, and God did not give it to you. That's how you can know it's demonic. The Holy Spirit gives you the spirit of courage, power, of love, and of a sound mind. That's how you know the Holy Spirit is in you. And so I just want to tell your congregation as we're talking here, and thank you for letting me lay all this out, just, you know, it's a daily thing of staying in the Word, knowing that you belong to the Lord. It's a daily thing of worshiping Him, Christian music, praise, prayer, immersing yourself in the things of God, around the people of God. And just getting up and living, I mean, you know, there's way more of a chance, you know, for these younger people especially that they're going to die in a car wreck today than they're going to die by COVID. And I just tell young people, elderly people even, take all the precautions you can take, whatever makes you comfortable. If you want to get vaccinated, that's between you and the Lord. If you want to have wear masks, that's between you and the Lord. If you want to socially distance and all of that. I mean, I'm not judging anybody. You do what you have to do. It's like flu season. I try to stay away from people that have fevers, people that have been diagnosed with the flu. I keep my hands washed, but I get on with life, Eric. And and when I'm called into the hospitals and with flu in the flu season, you know, if somebody in my church says, please come see me. Guess what I do? I go see them. And I pray, Lord, protect me. I'm going to go bless Sister Mary. And I wash my hands going in. I wash my hands coming out. I don't get all in her face. But I'm in the room with her. I pray with her. I get on my knees beside the bed. I hold her hand. I love her, asking for God to heal her. And then when I leave, I just take some alcohol, scrub my hands, and, and then I go on. And, and the Lord is always, always blessed. So I'm just saying I'm not going to be so afraid of death that I'm afraid to live. This is what Satan is doing in these prophetic times. This is his trick. It is his power. This is a power he has, which is why the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you conform to this world, you're going to be terrified of every little cough and sneeze you hear somebody. You know, it's funny that the mantra of today is if somebody walks up, up uh, if we were to walk up to somebody today and say, hey, pray for the family of the Smiths, you know, sis Sister Mary passed away. The next thing that comes out, oh my God, did she die of COVID? And I just look at them and I say, have you ever asked that question about the flu or pneumonia or cancer or AIDS or, or the, you know, why is it that if you die of COVID somehow it's a curse upon you? You know, it's an upper respiratory d disease. And, and I just tell people, guys, we got to get a grip on this. The body of Christ, we have got to put our hand in the hand of Jesus. We got to walk this walk. We get up tomorrow. We, we mow the grass, we pay the bills, we go about our life keep our head on a swivel. We're living in very prophetic times. We adjust with it. I tell our church all the time, I, I will accommodate the cultural needs, but I will not compromise the gospel. You know, people need to come by live stream now. So we've got a live stream. People want to join our church by live remote from all over the world. So we've got a way and a class and a thing that we do for that. I'm accommodating the culture, but the message never changes. I never compromise. It's through Jesus alone. The Bible's the word of God. A marriage is between a man and a woman. A boy is a boy. A girl is a girl. The womb is sacred. I mean, we're not going to compromise these things. And so you just get up, you go about your life, you be a part of the 6%. <laughs> you stand in the word of God and the Lord says, I will make a Noah out of you. I will make a Peter, I mean, a, 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 a lot out of you. We're living in the days of Noah. We're living in the days of Lot. Thank you, brother. Those who are 
afraid of death. Yes. Focus on the phrase, once to die and then the judgment. And yes. their fear is unfounded because they do not understand that they've been washed by the blood of Jesus, that when they stand before the throne of God, of what would be called judgment. Judgment is not going to be a recounting of your sins prior to your forgiveness of those right. sins. God says he has forgiven you. He has cast your sin as far as the east is from the west. He has sent it into the sea of forgetfulness. So this fear of death that I'm going to stand before the throne of judgment, the mercy seat, the bema, the, 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 the place of judgment that I'm going to stand there and I'm going to be lambasted for what I did in 1972 to that poor girl or or I came to faith in 1996 and I believe my slate was washed clean I was a new creation and yes what have I done with that gift given to me on that day I've devoted 25 years of my life to serving that message to leave corporate America, to go into full-time ministry, to preach the gospel, to reach the four corners of the world, with, to the millions of people uh, around the globe, to write books about it, to do television shows, so that the, the crown that I should receive, uh, even if it is simply a simple crown with no jewels, that's what I can expect on the day I stand before the Lord because I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And if we can just get people to understand that the sting of death is gone if you put your faith in Jesus. Your judgment is your reward. It is not your punishment. For the unbeliever, it is their punishment. It is their accounting for their rejection of Messiah, and it is the determining factor in their life. But for you and I, and for the two and a half billion people in the world that say, I believe in Jesus, this should be something that we have no fear of. It is the next step in the process of moving towards that resurrected right. body, to ruling and reigning with Messiah, to being there in that glorified body for eternity in Eden, which is heaven. They're the same. We are joining God back to the place he created of paradise. And this is a wonderful promise to us. Yes. Now, we're so caught up in the natural that we forget this incredible supernatural gift being given to us as believers is not something that I want to accelerate. I don't want to uh, put myself in a position where I step out in front of a bus just because I want to receive my reward. That's not the way this works. All right? In God's timing, it's God's timing. But while today, and today is the only day that exists in the Bible, that right. is what he says. He says, in these commands I give you today That's are right. to be on your heart. On, on, That's right. Don't what worry I, about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Matthew 6. <laughs> Stop this tomorrow concern. What are you going to do for the kingdom today? Seek first my righteousness. I talked to an electrician yesterday. He didn't want to talk about the Lord. I said, do me a favor. I know you're very uncomfortable with this. Religion has hurt you. When you put your head on the pillow tonight, promise me you will say these words. Lord, if you are real, make yourself known to me in my life. So that's it. Yep. He, that's, that's, that's all I want you to do. All right? I'm not going to preach you the gospel. I'm just going to say to you, I know religion has turned you off. But if God, and the, guy, the guy's name was Elijah. I said, if God, if God is real, ask him to make himself known to you. Are you yes. willing to do that? And he said, yes, I am. That was my full part in sharing the gospel, was opening the door for then the Lord to do his That's job. Right. Acts chapter I do 2. do the same thing, brother. That's, yeah. This is astounding. Acts chapter 2 ends the discussion. And God added to their numbers 
daily yes. being saved. Peter didn't add to their numbers. That's right. uh, the, the apostles didn't add to the numbers. God, that's God's job. My job, your job, is to find a way to touch the heart, to open the eye, to say, listen, just ask. If you are real, make yourself known to me. Then, then you know what, my friend Elijah? I've just set you free. You're no longer responsible. You've laid it at the floor. If there is a God, now it's his job. As he says in 2 Samuel 14, 14, he devises ways. Let him devise a way to reach you. Are you willing to do that? And he said, I am. So I know that just in my, in my kitchen, as I was having some wiring done, that I touched someone's heart with the simplest of words. Not, yes. not the eloquent, not the pontification. Theological exposition. Right. <laughs> Just to say, Lord, if you are real, make yourself right. known to me. Brilliant. We've been Brilliant. talking to Carl Gallops as we do on the uh, second uh, <clears throat> Monday of every month at 12 o'clock and the fourth Thursday of every month at 11 o'clock, the author of The Summoning. You can find it at carlgallops.com. You can find it at skywatchtv.com or you can visit ignitinganation.com and click on today's interview. It says, love the interview, get the book. Click that button. A book will be on its way to you. Carl Gallops, it is just, we, we never have enough time. Uh, you and I have uh, grown close over these five years that uh, yes. we've spent together and uh, you are family, uh, Brandon is family, Pamela is Thank family. Uh, we've got the whole family involved. Brandon's on with us every month, and yeah. uh, it's just a delight. And I look forward to seeing you right back here on the second Monday of the month. God bless you, my friend, and love Thank to you. your family. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, brother. I love you. God bless. Same God to you. God bless you. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll bring you the next edition of Revealing the Truth.